start recording. Great. So I'm Jody from um, Code Pink and... And I'm Emily, the local peace content coordinator at Code Pink. And we have a special guest tonight, um, Crystal Arnold, who will introduce more in a moment, but also as we're doing introductions, um, please, uh, we would love it if you put um, your name and where you're located in the chat and what's been alive for you over the past a uh, couple of weeks since we've met. I know last time we talked a lot about joy and celebration and it was such a juicy conversation. We ran out of time at the end to do a large group share. So um, yeah, we'd love to hear what's been alive for you. Uh, anything else you wanted to sh share, Jody, before we move on or? No. Okay, great. Um, well, like we typically do, we'll start with a grounding and a piece of culture. Um, because as we talk about the local peace economy, it starts with culture, culture is at the center. Um, and I'm really excited to share uh, this poem tonight. It's one of my favorites. It's called Red Brocade and it's by Naomi Sh uh, Shihab Nye, who is Palestinian American. Um, she was born to a Palestinian father and American mother and has um, lived uh, at different times in her life, both in Palestine and in the US. And again, it's called Red Brocade. The Arabs used to say, when a stranger appears at your door, feed him for three days before asking who he is, where he's from, where he's headed. That way he'll have strength enough to answer, or by then you'll be such good friends you don't care. Let's go back to that. Rice, pine nuts, here, take the red brocade pillow. My child will serve water to your horse. No, I was not busy when you came. I was not preparing to be busy. That's the armor everyone put on to pretend the purpose in the world. I refuse to be claimed. Your plate is waiting. We will snip fresh mint into your tea. And I'll put the link um, to that poem into the chat in a moment, but yeah, I thought that that was so appropriate to this moment in history, obviously, this moment that we're in collectively, and also for our topic tonight, which is the offers and needs market. Um, and we're really excited to have Crystal Arnold, Arnold here from Post Growth Institute to talk to us more about that. Um, some of you may be familiar with offers and needs market, some of you might be brand new. Um, and what I'll just share briefly before we um, dive in more is, um, the offers and needs market, as you'll learn today, it is um, it is a process. It's a it's there is. I'm just gonna. If you could just mute if you're not muted, just to minimize background noise. Thank you. Um, and if you need help muting, just let let us know. Um, that the yeah, it is a formal process, and something that has been really enriching for me. I've. Um, gone to an offers and needs market. I brought it into a space that I'm part of as well. And something that's been really illuminating and enriching for me is to carry the offers and needs market as an orientation into my relationships, into my community, into whatever space I'm in. Um, kind of carrying with me the questions, what do I have to offer? What gifts do I have? What can I bring here? And also what's needed here, which re requires obviously a lot of listening. Um, but it's really helped me think a lot more expansively about what I do have to offer. You know, in this culture, I think a lot of times we're talking about giving. It's often centered around money, um, which many of us don't have, you know, an abundance of to give. But, you know, I love to write. I can offer that skill. I have so many books in my, I'm pointing behind me. I know you can't see it, but behind me, I have bookshelves and like my books, like people come to me for books all the time. I make kombucha, I have scoobies I can give to people. I have kombucha, which is so good for your gut and nourishing. And like, it just helps me think really expansively regardless of whether or not I'm in a formal offers and needs market space. Um, so I just wanted to offer that. And uh, Jody, I'll pass it on to you. Thank you. So, you know, like we shared last week about offers and needs is it's also a great tool to begin your community because it helps everyone understand in a very 
fast and easy way what this could be and how um, connected we could be. It opens people up both to the like, just for me, the reflection on ourselves, like, what do I have to offer? What do I need? You know, when we talk about listening, being core to this work, it's it's a drop down into, um, you know, like Emily said, like, what do I have to offer? And and I would say another thing is, you know, what do I really need? Uh, because when we look at needs as opposed to desires, and we really relate to a need, because we know that the war economy manufactures desires within us um, that then create addiction and then put us on a path that doesn't serve us in any way and doesn't really nourish us or feed us in, in, in the ways that we need to be fed. Getting a needs met is, is, is much different and we've been diverted from our needs. So um, I, I love this tool and I'm so excited that um, Crystal has decided to join us today. She's volunteered her time to join us. She's an amazing facilitator, writer, mother, and she's the director of education at the Post Growth Institute. And this is one of her babies where she's taught a lot about offers and needs markets. She's med, met I led many of them. Um, she's also, you know, I'm a I'm a Oregonian. That's where my farm is. So I, I love I love the Oregonians and how local peace economy is so rooted in what Oregon is. Um, she has a degree in international economics, and um, she's just this is something I've I've watched her do and facilitate. So it's we have we have a gift today. She's also the creator of the Money Wise Women podcast, where she's done over a hundred interviews. Um, with women. So uh, welcome from Oregon. Um, Crystal, we, we're excited to have you and uh, take it away. Well, thank you uh, so much for having me. I've put some links in the chat. I'll share those again later. Would love to stay connected with you all and uh, hope you're inspired by this taste of how you can develop a greater community care in your own life and um, your communities, whether virtual or in person. Um, I am Crystal Arnold. I live here in Southern Oregon and I've been education director at Post Growth Institute for seven years now. And I have seen incredible things happen uh, when people come together in this way uh, called the offers and needs markets. And so it's, what what is this? Uh, it is, a, the, in its fullness, it's a two-hour guided process uh, where people come together in person or virtually and uh, really identify and potentially exchange um, knowledge, skills, passions, resources, opportunities, and needs. Like Emily said, it really can help people expand what they have of value to share. And then, um, you know, if, if we were online uh, uh, and doing the full thing, people would go into breakouts and, and kind of share their offers and then do the same with needs. And this could be like personal or on behalf of their organizations. And I'll give you some more examples how it's being uh, used around the world. Um, and so in this process of sharing and then connecting uh, with people, um, you know, they, it's not a gift, uh, exclusively a gift circle. It's people can ask for a certain amount, indicate they're interested in barter or negotiable uh, for, for um, the payments options, which is pretty cool. And that's why a lot of people in like uh, the time banking movement or other community currencies are, are using this to kind of get people engaged, right? We're more than just... Uh, um, consumers were really inviting people into a different sense of the market uh, in a way that really uh, nourishes their their soul. And so it's it's beautiful. Some of the ways this is being applied um, around the world. Well, we've bought, brought over 300 people through our facilitator training. And it's so amazing. Um, 
Emily's experienced one, even with a group of strangers online from around the world, these synchronicities can happen. People really open up being able to reflect on what their offers might be um, and then able to like express their needs, which can be right a little bit vulnerable uh, here for us. So we've found it is um, yeah, really a, a, a practice of developing a culture of uh, spaces where people can feel safe to bring forth their generosity and kindness. And I've seen so many ways in, uh, oh, just today uh, we were uh, teaching this method to Shareable, which is a community platform. I can give you the link. It's great to know about. And um they were just uh, saying at their last offers and needs market, they attended with us. They found a board member. They just put it out and when uh, someone took them up on that and it's a great match. So, you know, imagine right here in this, this room, if we had a couple hours and we may do this together in the future, what talents and treasures are right here when we look around and, um, and also what needs might easily be able to be met by others. Um, so it's really a great way to build that community um, where you're at and develop trust and belonging. Um, and I really love what's in the um, Peace Economies workbook and uh, this whole section on self-mapping, right? It's such a process. I'll show you in a moment here some of the prompting uh, questions and categories that we use uh, during the event just to give you a taste of it because um, there really is so much uh, so much there that that can be made visible for us so let me just do a quick screen share here um, and this is part of like also healing some of the trauma that's happened to all of us uh, from the modern capitalist economy in, in its form and just it's really powerful to have um, a, another way to connect and so this is uh, like the basic uh, format of, of the meeting you go through reflecting on your offers and then sharing in a small group and then connecting which really helps us this is also covered in the workbook uh, shifting from transactional to relational uh, types of orientation uh, to the world. And so it's really a beautiful process. And these are some of the categories. So we kind of help people expand uh, what they even recognize as value and or as uh, needs as well. So just to show you some of the questions. So imagine you had some time to reflect now and maybe we'll even take 20 or 30 seconds for you to reflect on this prompt. Um, you know, what am I passionate about? What resources am I connected to? What hidden talents would I love to share with another person? And what is something people always ask me about? So just for a little experiment uh, here to be interactive, uh, just take, you know, 15 seconds or so of silence together to reflect on on offers that might be arising. And even though we won't do the full process now, just wanted to give you a, a taste of this. So we'll just take a little bit of silence here together to reflect, jot down any notes. Great. And um, so if we were doing the full thing, you'd all get to share in small groups a little bit more about those offers and uh, network and connect. And so you can imagine this is powerful in person at, at conferences and workshops, uh, as well as uh, virtually. It works really well for networks of organizations and for you as community organizers in this room, you can get a sense of what the needs and offers are in your own community 
Uh, we often have people put their responses in a spreadsheet so that you could see everyone here in the room today, get a hold of them, see what kinds of things they're needing or, or bringing. So these are some of the questions around needs. You know, what, what are challenges you're experiencing? Something you'd like to learn? What's a resource you'd like to be connected to? What's something I need the support of other people to do? Um, so just taking a moment to reflect on your own needs, just for your own um, experience here for another 10, 15 seconds of silence. So I always like to also remind people to just notice how you're feeling right now, having gone through just that tiniest of exercise around this. If you take a moment to maybe close your eyes or tune into your body and be like, whoa, what's, what is going on in here? So I'm just going to give you the space to do that for a moment. And uh, yes, I am happy to kind of answer questions or have a conversation. Oh, I love this. Some of these things in the chat here. And we plan on having some time in breakouts too um, after this whole group session to explore how mutual aid shows up in your community as well. Um, what I will say here uh, before passing it back and seeing if there's any Q&A or anything, um, is this is just a, an ancient indigenous way of being, right? It's like all the mutual aid, we've been working closely with members of the Native American community here in Oregon and the practices they have already for community care, for sharing the generosity uh, that your wealth is measured by how much you have to give away and just these ways of caring for people and uh, connecting and exchanging uh, is is like an ancient um, indigenous practice. So we're just kind of reviving that because we need greater, um, yeah, to weave and mend our, our social fabric a bit in these times. Um, and so this, if this is something you're curious about bringing to your community, uh, we are happy to offer consultancy around this. Um, in, in Within a couple of hours, you can, um, with us, get everything you need to plan, run, and debrief your offers and needs market, whether it's just a small one or something larger. Um, and so, yeah, we have a whole toolkit and I'll, I'll share the website around that and uh, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you. So um, I just wanted to um, open it up uh, for folks. Um, if you have questions before we move into a breakout and kind of share um, with each other, are there any questions that you have for Crystal? Hands raised. Did everyone grasp it? Not, no questions? How to use it locally? Everybody feels good about it? I have like, <laughs> what I do you say? I have a question. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, go. Never mind. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering, Crystal, if there's like a particular story that comes to mind of um like an offer and a need connecting or just some sort of like connection connection or nourishment that you've seen come out of um an offers and needs market, whether um the virtual ones that you do or locally. Yeah, thanks for asking. Gosh, I have seen a lot and some of them include uh, most recently and uh, we did a local in-person uh, training with some of the Native Americans here to facilitate this and they were just so immediately offering 
advice on beadwork and and uh, someone created some regalia, like a, a special shirt uh, that they wear for the powwow and brought it the following week for someone. Um, and sometimes, uh, yeah, someone <laughs> ran into her. She um, found a virtual assistant through one of these at, at our local library that we had. And uh, she actually, the the woman who became her assistant just saw her need written out. And she's like, oh, I saw on your sheet, you have my job description <laughs> basically written. So then she knew it was uh, a great match. Um, Bob Morris here on the call has been a longtime supporter of ours here. And I think has probably even attended some of ours in the in the Grange Hall here. Uh, we've seen uh, it's it's a beautiful where that mutual aid is encouraged. Uh, there's been people, you know, a lot of it, people just need advice or connections. And all of us here in the room, we're probably just one step away from that person that you would love to meet or connect with. So it's really is about kind of finding that that generosity. Um, I have also, yeah, even seen a car. There was a grad student from Nepal who was at the University of uh, in Bozeman, Montana, and they did an offers and needs there. And uh, he's like, I could really use a car here to get around. And somebody's like, I have this one. You can use it for the next year while you're here. So people really are just willing to um, offer some amazing things. And oh, also we've seen it really helpful like within food um, supply and distribution systems. It's been used in Chicago by Mike Strode, one of our lead facilitators um, to kind of at, at those buyer and supplier food conferences to help uh, network and, and match people together, uh, which is really beautiful. It, it can kind of disrupt some of the power dynamics in a room, you know, when people are showing up expecting to just make one offer or just be needing something. So it helps people get a little more human um, in, in those kinds of professional spaces as well. Thank you for that. I, I want to share a story um, about when we, you know, maybe seven years ago, um, when it was really fresh and I had just seen the one in Ashland and um, Judy Wicks, who was with us very at the very beginning of the local peace economy work, is in Philadelphia, and she had a restaurant, and she was a local peace economy, and um, you know she broke with every tenant of the war economy. She would not behave to it at all. She worked always in cooperation. Everything she did served everyone working in all layers of the industry that she would part be part of from the farmers to the you know where the meat came from to whatever the suppliers were to the other restaurateurs to the workforce everything was based in local peace economy and so um she wanted to do an offers and needs market and so she put it out and she you know, in her way, she got all the other restaurant tours and that had been following her way um, and said, um, why don't we do an offers and needs market and oops, and put it out there for anyone that is, um, you know, wanting to start something like what we do. So not a, not a capitalist form, but a local peace economy form, entrepreneurship for the community, that you're coming to something to give the community something it needs and wants. And um, it ended up that um, all those young people shared with these older people that had done this, what they needed. And they worked with them for, I think um, like four years and really, you know, so it wasn't just like the offers and needs market and finish. It was out of it came, we need mentoring. Um, we need somebody to go to when we make a mistake. So they created a collective between both, you know, these old, you know, like those that have been through it could offer suggestions and those who were fresh. And um, it, it was quite amazing because everybody made it. Um, and everybody made it by breaking the rules about how you do this in the war economy. And instead of how do you do it in a peace economy? How do you be in relationship with the community? How do you not turn it into a transaction? How do you um, share with each other? How are you not in competition, but in cooperation? And so it created an even further, um, uh, you know, like networking 
of this whole idea that I think has benefited Philadelphia. Like when you think of Philadelphia and like its whole, that the, the sensibility of the culture, you can see that it's steeped in the sensibility of the culture across the, you know, a, a lot of the city. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it can turn into more is what I'm trying to say. And that essentially it's like with all of these things, you start with the seeds and then you, uh, you, you never know what trees are going to grow out of it. Um, so, uh, I, the other question, um, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm from Philly, they take care of each other here. So I think the question that was here was like something local. So I hope that answered that question. And then, um, Crystal, do you want to set the question that people should go into the breakout sessions with? Um, and then we'll stick them in breakout sessions. Yes, yes, happy to. And I will say too, uh, this process has been like the perfect medicine for this time of social isolation. I'm sure all of us over the last four years have felt this, uh, this um, loneliness or uh, desire to have greater connection or meaning in your life. And so this is just a great way to put into practice um, this kind of uh, reciprocity with life itself. You're like putting it out there and, and letting the magic come back. So it really is uh, a powerful way to hold space in your community and uh, have, have that leadership of creating these warm places of conviviality where people can feel welcomed and open and ultimately like a sense of belonging. I find that people are are really hungry for. Um, and so with that, we have, let's see. Oh yes, um, I uh, these questions are from the workbook here and uh, just gonna read them out. Whoops, um, there we go. So how is care already woven into your community and how can this be amplified? Uh, what is needed? How could you lend support and where do you need support? So you could reflect on any or all of those. There's a lot there, but maybe one or two in particular are calling to you. And I suggest we take maybe just uh, 20 seconds of silence to kind of tune in to what you might uh, want to share in the breakout. So I'm going to post, I, I put it in the chat and I'll post it in your breakouts. Um, I think I'm doing seven groups of three. Um, hope you'll show up for each other. And you know that you can come back if you uh, need to go to another room. Um, uh, we can place you somewhere else. Uh, when I put you in the room, just make sure to click to join. And we'll see you back in about 12 minutes. Welcome back, everyone. Hi. I hope you all had juicy conversations. We need at least another hour. <laughs> <laughs> I love to hear it. Sorry. <laughs> That's how I always feel on these calls. It's like everyone needs more time. Um, just a reminder to please mute yourself as you come back. You're likely off mute. Um, from your conversations. And I think Jody will just open it up to, to large group share. What are people, what are people learning? Um, what came up in your group? What what do you want to share with the large group here? Sounds like there was some rich stuff coming up. So uh, if you could just you can either raise your hand like this or raise your hand with the reactions at the bottom um, of the screen uh, and, and we'll call on you. Come on, Alice. <laughs> oh, you're good, Alice. <laughs> you got to unmute. I'm saying we hardly got to. Oh, it's another what? Alice. <laughs> There's two yeah. Alice. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, maybe somebody else from my group had an insight. Uh, 
or the, or the other Alice that um, unmuted also. So we've got another Alice. Let's hear from her. I'm Alice from uh, Arlington, and uh, I've been with y'all since 2007. And um, I we have practiced a lot of this, but we're very interesting and looking where we spend our money in the government as we and where people are not getting programs that they're needed so desperately. And how can we change that? And um, we started a mission group about, since this book came out, uh, it's called Peace and Justice. And we're working on that. And these are some of the issues we're starting to work with. We're looking at how much money we spend, where it's going, how can we cut that back? Cool. It's both like the first sad thing is how much money we're spending on war. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things is it's one trillion and a half dollars. It's not really the 800 billion they say. So there's that. And then it's how do we redirect how we spend our money away from how the war economy wants us to and how we want to with our needs, which I think this offers a needs market brings us in consciousness about. I see Rob Robbins with a, a raised up hand. Um, can you unmute? Unmute. Unmute. I think you unmuted for a second and then I went back. There we go. There we go. Hi there. Uh, I just wanted to mention one of the people in our room, Susie, uh, said that she hates reading things on screens, uh, referring to the downloaded book, downloadable book. And I just wanted to spread out to the main group that that book is also available in a hard copy on the Code Pink website. <laughs> Thanks. And I just want to raise up Rob, who's been part of the local peace economy um, at the encampment at UCLA. And he went to help them out on Monday morning and got arrested at like 6 a.m., um, was bound and tied in the back of a, a bus that took him all the way from UCLA to the back of the, the valley. And um, I think he got out around after nine o'clock at night. Right, Rob? Yeah, something like that, nine or ten. So uh, he's a hero. I'm uh, just thanking him for standing there with the students in all the ways, watching them be violated and and things thrown at them. And so it's it's been a, a week. Rob's been <laughs> taking care of the peace economy, which is one of the other things we don't even talk about is like, how do we be there for each other um, in these moments that are so traumatic and, and hard? And it is with, uh, as we watch, it is with just showing up in care, um, which is quite the contradiction to what's coming at everyone in the encampments. So um, uh, I, I love this long, short list of peace economy things. I, I'd like to refer to it. Bob, you want to go next, if you could unmute. Thanks. Yeah, I was thinking of this and what you were just saying, Jody, just brought it to the surface, and that's that... It's so easy for me to think initially that offers and needs are on the physical plane. But what came to me in our small group is that we have a lot to offer from our heart. Yeah. Heart gifts. Yeah. Thank you. And I think that's such a beautiful uh, reminder. Thank you. Um, that, you know, we, I think the war economy conditions us to think like, in the extreme and that we don't have it. And it's like, it really does, as you say, bring it back to the simple and the, and the, and the relational and at the core, the love and care that we're all capable of for ourselves and each other. So uh, Jan, if you want to unmute. Yes. I don't know if this would work for everyone, but for me, I'm on, on, on very often on the bus. We don't have a car anymore. We're trying to do that. And we've been successful for three years, but this is Boulder, Colorado. It may be easier here, but everywhere I go, I take my magic wand with me. I don't really have a magic wand, but when I'm on the bus, I think oh, that person needs money for the bus. This person could use, you know, uh, um, uh, a place to get clothes more, at a you know something they could afford so I'm constantly want looking at the people around me in my community and thinking where can I be with my magic wand how can I make a difference and it really helps because it doesn't make me sad it makes me happy <laughs> that is beautiful thank you 
And do you ever like, um, so maybe now with this offers and needs market, what would it be to ask somebody what they needed and maybe be able to direct them to where they could get it fulfilled? And you could actually be magic. <laughs> Perform the magic. So, um, because um, as we've seen that sometimes we know things that other people don't know, you know, um, privilege allows us a lot of information that others don't have the access to. And even just knowing where someone could go um, to access. And, um, uh, you know, some people don't know that they could get on Facebook and there's free things that come up there every day um, that maybe they're looking for. That There's a lot of things that we don't understand. And um, I think one of the things about the war economy is um, the, the sense of um, scarcity is so ingrained in us that we don't understand our own privilege, no matter where we are kind of on that spectrum. And so sometimes it's just from the place of gratitude of life that you start to come out of the scarcity and into the abundance. And when you're in the abundance, you can see so much more clearly what you might have to offer from that place of sitting in abundance, of that place of we all sit in a place of privilege and, and I mean privilege in the ways of some of us as education, some of us have been in fields that other people don't have access to, you know, somewhere there's a, there's, I mean, and all of us have the privilege of being able to love. Um, so, you know, uh, being able to center in those places, help us then expand the universe of possibility for someone else, which, which is that, um, that magic wand. Um, Crystal. Oh, I love this. And like, like Bob was mentioning these gifts of the heart. And I feel like it's often just reflecting and speaking it out in, in front of other people. I've seen it work <laughs> amazing things, sometimes immediate, sometimes it ripples out down the road. Sometimes people reflect and realize, oh, I have that need and I know exactly who can fulfill it. So it's really a beautiful thing to open up um, to that way of seeing the world like um, with as and and each person as as kind of uh, so many dimensions. There's people we probably see and often regularly and, and we don't ever really know what their needs are. And so we certainly would be willing to help. Uh, we've seen beautiful things here. I was telling my breakout about um, uh, the Almeda fire in 2020 that came through Southern Oregon, burned thousands of, of homes in a day, and the beautiful mutual aid that came from that. And so certainly uh, having people uh, able to already have those connections before some kind of natural disaster is is so helpful just to feel that that sense of security that is beyond what what money can buy it really is this indebtedness when you've lent uh you know volunteered to babysit your neighbor's kids and there's just kind of a, a flow of reciprocity with life and uh looking just like you on on the bus how how can i help what's what's needed so it is such a beautiful heartfelt compassionate uh practice to be in I just want to acknowledge Abdura Hamani. I don't know if I just totally butchered your name. Um, your list is really great. And I think it's uh, the lists that you give are a lot of the smaller pieces that local peace economies build from. Um, and we will pass it out, you know, in the follow up from this. But I think, you know, what's what's in what you've given are the, the, the bite sized pieces that can be taken from it and build the local piece, you know, begin your local peace economy around. And we've talked about some of those examples in past times, but this is a really lovely breakout of them that helps you kind of know like which part are you looking to serve and what does that look like? Um, so thank you for adding that into the chat and we will pass it around for everyone. Um, and I saw as in um, you had your hand up if you wanna unmute. Yeah, thank you. Um, so this is a, a question slash concern. So I live in a in a suburb uh, in in Michigan, and 
pretty much everybody is um, more or less basically just the, you know, the regular busy middle class family. We don't, uh, in a way, our societies are arranged a little bit like if I want, I, I don't want to use the, the word segregation, but it is by, by demographically, it is segregated. So we don't even get exposed. I thought I, I would be you know, I, I would love to be able to help, but I don't even see the people who have that. And then, you know, suddenly there is like, I, I know there is a lot of need in Detroit, but, you know, I'm not exposed to them. I don't know them. They don't know me. There is not that trust that I can build or, or they, I, you know, they, you know, so th there is that missing link. And I think a lot of cities and a lot of suburbs are at least uh, arranged like that, perhaps by purpose. I don't know, but that, that this is how it is. I don't know how to cross that barrier. So uh, Azen, I think that's a great question. And we've had a lot of answers to that over the last seven years. So I'd love to do one of these around that um, because, you know, and it goes back to the privilege we we're talking about um, because certainly for me and my community, um, I dealt with that right in the very, right in the very beginning. And what was it to find those that are at the biggest effect of the war economy? And how do you, you know, move in to learn from them and to listen to needs? So I think we should uh, turn that into a, um, one of our next uh, times together, because I think that's a really, really good question, because we do live in a segregated world and um, coming together and flowing together and being related to all of it helps us be stronger and smarter and and uh, and life more vibrant um, for us. So we're coming to the end. I just want the deepest gratitude, Crystal, for all you do. And thank you for being with us today. What a generous offer that you, we we reached out with our need and she offered herself. So, um, and in a very short period of time, this manifested. So we are the example of the offers and needs market right here. Um, so thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing. And, um, you know, as I said last time when we were going to do this, it's a really great way to start your community locally. And, um, you know, make sure you put your email in if you want to know more, if you want to be on, you know, uh, Post Growth Institute has a lot more to offer than just what Crystal has shared. There's a lot there. It's a partner of, you know, local peace economy. We work a, a lot. We're moving to get, you know, like tools, sharing tools. Um, and, you know, we develop the tools and share them and pass them around. So um, if you want to be added to her outreaches, please put yourself in the chat and she'll add you. Um, but there's also a lot more resources and we've talked with her about maybe bringing her back in a month or so um, where we could do, where we're prepared. Um, and maybe we bring in our own communities with us to this and a much bigger group of like, what would that look like together? Um, so uh, that's that's an offering into the future. I just want to like deepest gratitude for all that you amazing peacemakers do across this country. Uh, we live in very uh, interesting times. So I, uh, you know, we come together also to nourish each other's hearts. That's why we, we come together. You know, it's like here we are to know that there are those that are serving a peace economy that um, have divested from the war economy are cultivating the future. And I wanna say these young people are cultivating a future and it is beautiful. So if everyone could just like let their hearts be nourished right now with what beauty is happening, even as we have to witness the horrors and the stupidity. Um, so uh, gratitude, see you in a couple weeks. Um, always feel free to reach out with questions and as you as as in did ideas for what we want to be having a conversation with um when we're together next. Aw, thanks, Jan. Love. Thank Lots you. Of love. <laughs> I put links in the chat to register for our next call. I know some of you, this is your first time here. They do happen bi-weekly every other Wednesday at this time. So we'd love to have you join. Um, and we also have a listserv to stay connected. So you can join that as well. Um, and I put my email in there too for questions. But Thank you all so much. Thank you. Bye, Martha. Great to see you. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Take good Thank care. You.
Thank you so much, Crystal. That was awesome. What a great community. I just love what y'all are up to and glad we got to connect. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll work on developing an audience for like a real dive together. That'll take some outreach and some education. So I think it will be great. Awesome. Cool. I'll send you a follow-up uh, email with some details. Thank cool. You well. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Amazing. Awesome. Thank you. you Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Good night. Have fun.